Bishop Catherine, let me add my thanks to those that the bishop offered to you for those very, very thought-provoking and inspirational comments. You know, whenever I have the occasion to appear in a program of this type, I, I always like to follow a really good speaker or a really great preacher, such as we've heard this evening. And the reason I like to be in that position is that a great preacher has really warmed the audience up and left you all with favorable feelings which I trust will now carry over to me as well. So it matters very, very little what I have to say. I'm very happy to be known as that guy that spoke right after the great presentation by the presiding bishop. But I do have some really good news to report tonight, and so I hope that you'll bear with me for just a while, and I think you'll be very, very impressed. As I said at the outset, this is a very special, exceptional evening. It's a critical next step on a journey that began four years ago with a blank sheet of paper, a lot of creative ideas, and a new vision for our diocese. In truth, that journey that we're on began 40 years ago with the establishment of the Episcopal Diocese in San Diego. Just imagine now the pride that those visionary leaders would be feeling if they could see us today, continuing what they began so many years ago and building on the foundation that they established. There have been a lot of inputs to the, the vision that we've, we are currently embarking on. A, a lot of input, a lot of praying, uh, and, and a lot of discussion. And there's been a lot of discussion, a lot of prayer, and, and two years ago, the delegates of convention decided that now, now was the time to move forward with this vision. Now was the time to lay a new foundation for a future of ministry in the Diocese of San Diego. And now was the time to launch the building, build the serving church campaign. A capital campaign, as you probably all know, represents an opportunity for our diocese to ra rally around a common vision and to call forth the resources, both human and financial, that strengthens our ministries. It's a shared celebration of God's grace, God's providence, and God's compassion. And while there are many dollars that are dollar signs that are associated with the capital campaign, in my view, it's not just about the money. It's about how our commitment to the gospel calls us out of our comfort zone into acts of generosity and caring, and how being the church brings us into compassionate relationships with the people we serve in the broader community. Now, I'm fully capable of going on and on and on to describe the campaign uh, in its various facets, but in order to spare you all that, We've brought, a, we've brought together a variety of voices that will tell the story far more eloquently than I have. We have it on video, and I would ask that they dim the lights, and let's take a look. This campaign has tried to do nothing more than give a diocesan expression to the values and priorities that mark all congregations of our diocese, to care for the needy, to raise up learned leaders, to build creative communities of caring, and to ensure the integrity of our facilities. So let me seize on this opportunity to thank you all for being a people of compassionate vision who have been willing to step out on faith and launch this outstanding and ambitious Build the Serving Church campaign. I said at the outset I had good news to report, and let me get right to that. Since last year's co convention, we've been laying the foundation for a successful campaign. Well, tonight I'm happy to report that every member of the diocesan staff has pledged to the campaign. Every member of the campaign steering committee, the standing committee, and the executive council have made a pledge to the campaign. And 85% of all the active clergy in the diocese have made a commitment to the campaign. And the vast majority of our early givers have already responded very generously. In fact, the overall reception to the, to the campaign has been very, very positive. So it's with a great deal of pride and a lot of satisfaction that I'm pleased to announce that the members of our diocese have already pledged just over $2 million to the build. And that's comprised of only 550 individual gifts. So as you can see, there's a lot of potential left here. The largest gift was $350,000, and the smallest gift is $5. So as you can see, no gift is too large. 
And so if there's anyone here tonight who would like, like to make a gift larger than $350,000, I'll meet you at the door and walk you to your car. I'll even drive you home. <laughs> now, given that we've already raised 80% 80, 80 of the original goal of $2.5 million, we feel very, very confident in confirming that goal, which we expect to meet and I expect to fully expect to exceed. But I must be honest with you, we, we really can't rest in our laurels at this point. Getting to our goal is going to require a lot of additional hard work and prayer, meetings and laughter, potlucks and parties. Absolutely everybody is invited to participate. In fact, we've already begun working with individual churches uh, to organize their own fundraising efforts in the weeks and months to come to give everyone an opportunity to participate, no matter how large or how small. We hope that everyone will become involved. The video you saw just a few moments ago is available for, your own, for use in your own church. And we've prepared flash drives that can be obtained from Hannah Wilder. She's the communication officer of the diocese who's been giving us all orders down here to, as to what to, do, what to do next. And the video has already been posted to YouTube and it's available for download from the diocesan website. Churches throughout the diocese this coming week will receive in the mail information packages complete with pledge forms and brochures. And there's also a resources page in the campaign section of the diocesan convention. And there you'll find a variety of materials for you to modify and to use to share the story of the campaign with the rest of your congregation. And thanks to the visionary leaders of St. Paul's Cathedral, those resources are being translated into Spanish as well. So where do we go from here? In the weeks in between now and Easter, we hope that individual congregations will have their own fundraising campaign tailored to suit the culture and the needs of your community. We've contracted with the professional resources of the Episcopal Church Foundation to help you and to be of assistance to you. In order to reach our goal, we need the prayerful consideration of every member of this diocese. And again, keep in mind, that your campaign leaders will simply be asking you to join them in a commitment that they've already made. So I'm boldly asking you to do three favors for me. First, work with your vestry and your clergy leadership to decide the best way for your congregation to be involved in this campaign. Second, recruit, recruit volunteers who will work with the diocesan leadership to carry out your plan and thirdly, invite every member of your congregation to give whatever they can, no matter how large or how small. With your help, there's no question in my mind that we will not only meet our goal, but we will exceed it. But tonight, it's about enjoying ourselves. And this is the time to celebrate what the diocese has accomplished over these 40 years, and to rejoice in the incredible generosity and compassion that have resulted in $2 million being pledged to the campaign as of this hour. So this is the time to say the church's simplest prayer. Thank you. Thank you for, thank, thank you God for all that you've done through us, for all that you've made of us, and thank you for all that you wish us to become as your serving church. And I thank you. Thank you, Mark. And thank you. It's been a wonderful night. And before we end with prayer and a little music, I want to simply make my own thank you to you, sir. Nine years, you have been someone who has supported me and this community in ways that I could not ask for or imagine. Uh, your wisdom and one of the hardest working souls I know. Thank you. In these years I've been your bishop, I continue to discover what amazing people you are, your strengths, your gifts, uh, what you give to each other, what you give in ministry to the world. And it just keeps seeming to grow, or maybe I'm just discovering it more and more. And, and that, because of that, is why this campaign and all the, the, the things that are interconnected with it that are making us who we are becoming, uh, we celebrate this night. 
And so I would like to end in prayer and then have just a brief word. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you for those who have gone before us in this diocese and given us a goodly heritage. We pray that we will be good stewards of our inheritance and build on the solid foundation that we have received. Give us imagination and strength to be a church filled with Jesus' fearless love for the world. Give us eyes to see the other who we must claim as your beloved. Give your word and heart to a hurting world that you yearn to restore. And give us generous hearts so that we may graciously give the gifts that you have bestowed upon us. Bless us this night and in the days ahead to accomplish your will through all these endeavors, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And just a quick note here, as you prepare to depart, you'll notice the centerpieces crafted uh, by Camp Stevens. They're available for donation. Uh, and there are envelopes on the table which, with a suggested donation amount and more information. You're welcome to take everything except the lights, and you can drop those off at the table in the back when you leave. So, dear one, stick around for just a musical finale. And I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, and I invite, uh, would like to welcome and invite uh, Mary Munger Taylor to come forward for something special. <laughs>